All right, so we're going to take a look at this chart, uh, this uh, mystery prophecy chart, whereas on the on the left-hand side, we speak of Christ the head, but uh, uh, under prophecy, we speak of, uh, the scripture speaks of Christ the king. Now, I'm going to, this is what it, where we're going, but I will build it step by step. So first of all, the most important division I can maintain, if I'm going to be able to understand what's going on in Scripture, I must understand that there is a distinction between that which is mystery and that which is prophecy. Mystery is that which uh, is hidden, uh, is hidden in God. Uh, God reveals it. He's revealed it through Jesus about the kingdom. And he's revealed it to Paul regarding the body of Christ. So, under prophecy, Christ is the king. Under mystery, Christ is the head, the head of the body. So, whenever you hear somebody speaking of King Jesus, well, that's a little clue that they haven't quite sorted out mystery from prophecy. Now, I don't mean that critically, because there isn't exactly a lot of instruction going around that helps people keep track of this. Prophecy, that's something that can be that can be found by searching the scriptures. Search the scriptures, they which testify of me. That's those are Jesus' words. Now, unsearchable, the unsearchable riches of Christ, that's what Paul said. And again, all these phrases you can you can uh, search them with a search engine and find the actual verses that say these things. Now, mystery and prophecy, prophecy and mystery, are, are framed together. We know that from Ephesians chapter 2. This is of the household of God. So while they're separate, you know, Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So he's speaking prophetically, but he noticed what he said. He says there are many dwelling places. And so we we see even Jesus pointing that there, that there are these different dwelling places, one for mystery, one for prophecy. Now, at the bottom, we have Jesus Christ, who is the foundation. And built upon him are the apostles and prophets. At the top, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And we know that from Ephesians 1.10, that in the fullness of time, everything is got to be brought together in Christ. The apostle Paul was the apostle of mystery, whereas Peter made the declaration regarding the, the identification of the Christ the Messiah. Paul preached the gospel of Christ, that is the dispensation of the grace of God, whereas Peter declared the gospel of God. Now, these are different gospels. The gospel of Christ is the dispensation of the grace of God that I am saved by grace, whereas the gospel of God, well, Peter declared this in Matthew 16, 16. He says, thou art the Christ. What Peter is declaring is that Jesus is the physical uh, fulfillment of all that had been promised regarding the Messiah for, he for the Hebrews. And so Peter recognized that. The gospel of Christ, the dispensation of the grace of God, was preached by Paul to the uncircumcised. Whereas the gospel of God went to the circumcision. I'll also say that the gospel of God was a gospel that God expected the Hebrew to obey. This was not, you know, come to Jesus if you will. They were expected to believe it. Paul talks about this in Romans uh, ch chapter 2 where he says, What advantage hath the Jew? much in every way for unto them was were committed the oracles of god god is saying to the hebrew you had the prophets 
and and the prophet spoke my words you are expected to obey the gospel of god that's not true of the gospel of christ the gospel of christ is an invitation to the uncircumcised to come to be saved the advantage of the jew is in romans chapter three oh, chapter verses three. one and two yeah romans chapter three verses one and two what advantage hath the jew much in every way so Paul reached out to the called to be saints. These were the uncircumcised who were cut off from the Hebrews. Paul calls them. They were Hebrews by ethnicity. They were Greek by culture. So what do you mean? What do I mean, Hebrew Greeks? Well, their ethnicity was Hebrew, but their their um, customs, culture. their culture was greek they were they were not mixed in with hebrew culture they had to move out they were they were now uh, estranged from the people and so what did they take up they took up greek culture so they are hebrew greeks and greeks in diet in language in clothing in customs they're very different the saints well they were hebrews and Jews, so they were Hebrews, and Jews pointing to the fact that they were obedient to the law, and that they obeyed, they were circumcised, they did what the law expected of them. And then there were Hebrew Grecians. Now the Grecians were Hebrews, they were circumcised, they obeyed the law, but they had moved to other parts, they had moved away, and they moved to other parts of the world and they had taken up grecian culture now we know that they were uh they were jews in their belief because in acts chapter 6 the grecians were allowed to sit down with the jews that would have never happened if those grecians were uncircumcised and non-believers they sat down with the hebrews the Hebrew Jews, because they too were believing uh, in the gospel of God. So they believe that Jesus is the Christ, but their, their manners and language were different, and it did cause some problems. I think I saw Phil's hand up. Phil, was your hand up? Yeah, it was. I wanted to make the point that the Grecian Jews is also um, a phrase because they were Jews, but you made that point. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, then on back on under. Can I the, just say something? Yes. So in the church in Jerusalem, which was in its infancy, the Hebrew Jews spoke Hebrew. The Grecian Jews had a preferred language of Greek. Greek, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we see that. That comes out clear in, in Acts chapter yeah, there 6. There was a language barrier. Partakers of the benefit. Now I, that's now this word comes up, barbarians. Paul says in Romans 1.14, he says, I'm a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians. So I'm finding out that not only am I a Gentile, but relative to the Hebrews, I'm a barbarian. Now I don't I, now the word barbarian is both a noun and a verb. And so I'm not a barbarian by verb, where we talk today about barbarous, uh, barbarous actions or somebody that is a savage. Uh, but really, what we're talking about here is by culture. The barbarians were foreigners. Uh, they were foreigners. And the, the base point now is the Hebrew. Compared to the Hebrew, Armenians, I am an Armenian. Uh, that's that's not, by the way, that's not Armenian, that's Armenian. Uh, and Armenian are a, a people that live uh, uh, east of Turkey in their own land, and the Armenians would have been barbarians relative to the Hebrews. They spoke a different language, they ate different food, they knew, th knew nothing of the Hebrew scriptures. So I find out that I, as an Armenian, when I become saved, I am a partaker of the benefit. I sort of, I transition from my barbarian state to being now added to those uh, that be are believers of the gospel of Christ. 
Jews and proselytes under prophecy. The Jews and the, pro uh, Jews and the proselytes were those that were studying the law and they knew the promises. These are Hebrews. Now, altogether on the left, we have this group, which is a new creature. On the right, this group is under the new covenant. Now, the new creature, because I'm complete in him, but the new covenant, there's still a covenant for them by which they must live. The, uh, the new creature is looking forward to the high calling of God. This is also referred to as the rapture. The rapture is a mystery. This is a meeting in the air. Whereas the second coming, there's a first coming, there's a second coming. That's prophetic. The second coming is going to be on the earth. My citizenship is in heaven where there are those that are going to be of the kingdom in earth. So, second coming for the kingdom in earth, his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives before Jerusalem. That's the second coming. How do I know it? It's a promise. God said, Jesus says, I'm going to come again. It was what the uh, 12 disciples who became the 12 apostles were looking for. They were looking. Will you restore the kingdom now to Israel? So he says, I'm coming back. That's a promise. It's prophecy. Whereas the high calling of God, well, this is mystery. This is that we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's from uh, Paul to the, to the Thessalonians. That's very distinct from Jesus coming down to the Mount of Olives. We're going to be caught up. The body of Christ is going to be caught up in the clouds to meet all believers from this dispensation in the clouds in heaven. So we sit together in heavenly places. That's where our seating is. We're not coming to the earth to rule and reign with Christ on the earth. It's going to be the 12 apostles who are going to sit upon 12 thrones judging Israel. I'm so relieved to know that I have nothing to do with sitting upon 12 thrones on the earth judging Israel. I would have absolutely no ability to be a judge of Israel. But I think I'll do just fine sitting together with you all in the heavenly places enjoying the creation of God. Now, this is one body, and it is the household of God fitly framed together. So there is only one body, but we are joined together. So Jesus spoke of, in my Father's house are many mansions. That word mansion, while today it's been liberalized into what we think a mansion is, but it's it really means there are many places in heaven to dwell. In the dispensation of the fullness of times, this is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. In the dispensation of the fullness of times, it's a future dispensation. It may be just around the corner that God is going to gather together in one, all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth, even in him. So, that is this chart, which we now have. It's also on our web page. This chart that now speaks of these things and helps me to understand the difference between mystery and prophecy.